Hi, I'm Steve Mays from Soulwise, and what I'm going to do now is start a series of videos which discuss and go through the uh, Wi-Fi uh, management solution from IPCOM. So this is a uh, management solution built around a series of controllers. Um, there are several controllers. The three main controllers are the AC 1000, 2000 and 3000, but also they have built in some AP management into some of the other uh, router products as well. But I shall be concentrating mainly on these three main controller products. The difference between them um, comes down to the number of access points they can manage and extra features, uh, for example, some sort of cloud management setup and also uh, different levels of captive portal um, user login type administration built into the product. So those are the three products and they work with the uh, all of the current new generation of IP com access points. And for example, here I'm going to be playing around with the little on the wall one, which is the AP255. And I've just gone down to stock and grabbed a couple of the dual band AP355s to use in these videos. And um, I shall be powering them through uh, an IPCOM G1009 uh, gig PoE switch. So that's the hardware. Uh, that I shall be using in this series of videos and what I'll do is I'll go through each product in turn uh, say from the simple AC1000 going up to straight up to the Big Butch 3000 and uh, I'll be perfectly frank it will be a learning curve for me as well uh, because some of these products particularly 3000 does a lot of different things it's, it, it's actually a very very powerful piece of kit um, designed for uh, thousands and thousands of access points and the captive portal uh, which is really sort of an ad pushing uh, system in it we're talking about an ad system system and monitor uh, user monitoring of it's 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 something stupid like 50,000 users or something so a colossally powerful piece of kit and uh, I, I will be perfectly frank, it's, it's staggeringly overkill for 99.999. All right, it's staggeringly overkill for all of our customers. I haven't dealt with a single customer ever that actually wants to control thousands of access points and tens of thousands of users. Um, but it does have some other nice little features in it which are actually uh, uh, equally applicable to the smaller size organization. So we're talking about somebody here with, let's say, uh, up to a few hundred access points and up to you know a, a thousand or so users so it's got a very very nice uh, features for ad pushing uh, to the clients uh, to the connected clients but all three units um, I shall discuss um, in more detail with the uh, with the following videos so let's get on with that okay so what I'm going to do now is uh, continue on uh, with a video on the uh, IPCOM AC controllers and first of all take a look at the starter product in the range which is the AC1000. Now uh, the AC1000 uh, is the baby of the product range. It can only cut with a maximum of 128 access points though to be fair that's probably going to fulfill 99 plus percent of the marketplace anyway. Um, now, as far as what it can do, what it can't do, I'm of the opinion that really I wouldn't call this so much a management unit as a configuration unit. So what it does is it gives you a unified management, same buzzword there, unified management of, of the access points on the network. So it gives you a group way of managing uh, setups such as SSID, RF settings, um, firmware updates, etc, etc. So let's see what we get then. So now the controller by default is on the address 10.1. So uh, I've already got this typed into here and I'm going to log in on the default username and password, which is admin admin. And click on login. So this has already been powered up now for uh, for about five or ten minutes. So it has automatically discovered the access points on my local network here. And I've got three access points connected. Uh, I've got a couple of 355s, which are the dual band uh, products. And I've got the 255 uh, in the wall 2.4 gig product. 
And by default, it's come up with information like the number of online users, uh, the SSIDs being used by the access points, and the firmware versions and their status. So let's go through what we need to actually do some uh, configuring of the access points. Now, the configuring of the access points, just click on there, the configuring of the access points is done uh, by a series of policies. Policies are a group of settings, okay? So you have uh, SSID policies, which are different groups of SSID settings. You have radio policies, RF power, etc., etc. VLAN policies, which I shall stay away with because every time I play around with VLAN tags, everything starts getting broken, but it has it if you want it. And maintenance policies, which are things like uh, regular rebooting, scheduled tasks, and that sort of thing. So let's go through these. Uh, let's go to SSID policy. Now, obviously, by default, it's got uh, the standard one it comes with out of the box, but if we click on add to go to new one, we give the policy a name. I'm going to be totally original and give it the name test and we're going to give it a uh, SSID test SSID like that. I'm going to go to security and select WPA2 both and I'm going to put in my normal password of Fred Fred and um, other things you've got down here is you notice you've got client limitation per SSID uh, 30 is default that's fine with me and whether you want client isolation or whether you want the SSID hidden and right at the bottom if you want to start playing around with VLAN tags. As far as I'm concerned I'm going to leave it on 1000 I don't want to start playing around with VLANs so click on save and that's done so we've created an SSID policy let's just now create a radio policy yeah, again there's the default one uh, and you can see it basically uh, allows us to set the country, where they want the Wi-Fi on and off, the operating mode, bandwidth, uh, transmit power, etc. So I'm going to click on Add for a radio policy. Give it some unique name like, hey, test. Yeah. Uh, enable disable. You've got airtime scheduling, which I'm not going to play around with for this simple demo. I'm going to go to England for the country, and I'm going to select Auto for uh, bandwidth and channel usage and the RF power by default is set to 23 which if we add the antenna gaining access points which is typically about 3 dB that means obviously way over the legal limit and since we are a nice legal abiding company we'll lock it down to 17 and I'm click on a, uh, uh, not, not going to click on save I'm going to do the 5 gig one now 5 gig one England 11 AC uh, transmit power well we can go up to 30 dBm of 5 gigs so I'm not going to worry about 21 and uh, 5 gig pro priority basically means it will naturally try to do some band steering so if the client connects which is capable of 2.4 and 5 gig if it tries to connect at 2.4 the system will coerce them onto the 5 gig band just to clear up uh, channel space and client space on the 2.4 I'm going to click on save so that's um, a radio policy created uh, VLAN policy I'll click on it so you know what we're talking about but I won't actually create it because it's far too complicated but we can set up a um, load of VLAN tags and the access points um, typically have uh, most of them have two LAN ports they don't all have two LAN ports but you can specify a trunk port if you wanted to, uh, but I'm not going to worry about that because that just makes life complicated. Uh, we've got maintenance policies. A quick look at those. So we've got multiple different points of maintenance policies. We've got um, this one here, which enables us to do. Um, we can actually uh, auto maintain the actual products, uh, turn the LEDs on and off at certain times of day, etc. We've got alert policies, which uh, will send us um, emails if something happens, like the AP fails or the AP traffic uh, setting is exceeded or the client uh, limitation for a access point is exceeded. So that's the alert policies, and obviously up here is where you actually put in the uh, email settings. Not going to worry about that. And we've got admin policies. 
I don't really know what admin policy means. I don't really know. Your policy name, username, password, confirm. Pop. Yeah, I don't really know what that one means. I presume it means a way of applying a set administration username and password to your group of access points. That sounds that sounds sensible. Click on cancel. Uh, deployment policy. Um, basically, uh, what sort of signal transmission do we want to give it? What are we going to put it in an area where our optimization is for coverage or for high density, etc.? So it's got policies to, do, to set that up for you. Uh, obviously, we're just going to leave everything on defaults and not worry about that. So the only thing I'm really going to worry about is the SSID and the radio policy. So let's go how you actually apply those policies. So you go to manage access point. Uh, you select your group of or groups of access points. So I'm going to pick up all. So all these access points are going to change. Obviously, we've had multiple access points. We'd have to individually select them, the ones that we actually want to apply these uh, policies to. I'm first of all going to apply the SSID policy for the. So I'm going to apply test for the 2.4. I'm going to apply test for the 5. Click on save. As you can see now, you can see it's actually changed the SSID to test SSID. And I'm going to do uh, RF policy, change it to test, and that should do all that. So that's it. Those are now uh, configured and uh, being, uh, being set up. It's not rocket science. It's actually quite an easy system. Um, I say all it really is, I would just consider it as a way of doing a block maintenance and block configuration of your access points. So it's not doing anything really sexy like topology maps, coverage maps, um, lots of nice real time graphs of AP traffic throughputs, rogue AP detection, you know, all that sort of stuff, you know client throughput testing it's not doing any of that sort of stuff it really is a a nice simple tool uh, for you just to select a whole pile of access points and apply um, light configurations to those access points uh, with a single click so uh, for that it's an ideal product i just go through these other screens very quickly you've got um, ap uh, user status obviously we've got no connected users so i can't show you anything exciting on there and under system tools, we've got the usual things, uh, status, um, IP settings that you want to give things, um, DHCP list for the access points, blah, 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 blah. Uh, whether you want to alter the license, now it's set to 128 access points, which is the maximum anyway. Um, and this is an interesting thing. You can actually use the um, the AC1000 as a subcontroller underneath another controller. Okay, uh, basically the other controllers have to be um, AC2000 or above units, but this way you can actually use an AC2000 to administer a block or a number of AC1000 units. Um, I suppose the rational goes, uh, goes is you would have AC1000 at a number of uh, disparate branches and you could have them connecting back to an AC2000 at HQ and use that through that AC2000 do a block management or individual management of each of those sites. So here it's saying, um, OK, do you want to do that? If you do, you need to be telling me the IP address or the domain name of the actual uh, where the sort of parent controller is, the management port, upgrade ports, etc. Um, and uh, so that's it. So uh, that is the AC1000. Um, well, let's look at that. We've got date time settings. Obvious know what those are. And yes, we could, uh, could change that to uh, GMT if you wanted to. Uh, we've got uh, system logs for alerts. As you say, it's shown here as the status of the various access points coming coming up. Um, it does actually have built-in DHCP for the access points, so that's a nice little feature. 
um, quite a few of these uh, network management uh, or Wi-Fi management systems, what they do is they use the um, your main DHCP server on the network as a way of dishing out addresses to the to the access points, which is fine. I've got no issues with that at all. Um, but what the IPCOM products do is they will actually allow you to use the controller as a DHCP server just for the access points. Um, makes it a little bit easier. Um, does it make it easier? Yeah, I think it makes it easier. Anyway, it's an alternative way of doing things. So um, you can, it does that as well. Uh, network diagnostics, usual things like pings and trace routes and that sort of thing. So anyway, that's the AC1000. Um, not a massive complicated uh, controller. Uh, I say more of a configura configurator, um, but it does what it says on the tin. So that's the 81 thing. Thank you very much.